Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you and welcome back to the channel where you join me today to go for a test drive in this Audi R8 V10 Plus. But this is no ordinary R8 V10. In fact, this car has been to MTM and it has a few small changes that we're going to be taking a look at. And the first one of those is if I come round to show you in the engine bay of this car, sitting in there atop the engine is a supercharger. This is an 802 horsepower R8 V10 Plus and today we're going to take a full look at it, talk about the modifications by MTM to this car before going for a test drive to see what over 800 horsepower in an all-wheel drive R8 feels like. I'm looking forward to this. One of my favourite things about cars from MTM is that they don't necessarily scream what's been done to them until you get up close and take more of a detailed look at it. So we're very familiar with the R8 Plus. I've spent plenty of time driving in the Coupe, the Spider, at various launch events that have been held. But this one is obviously with a slight difference. And we'll start taking a look more around the visual side of things. You'll notice the livery pack, the MTM style decals that go over the roof, and also the supercharged vinyl that runs the side of the car as well, of course, as saying 8. 102 on the side which you might not necessarily initially realize means the power of this car because the standard is 610 from what would have been a naturally aspirated 5.2 litre v10 torque is also up on this to 710 newton meters so combine that with 192 additional horsepower and it is clearly an absolute weapon so it maintains audi's four-wheel drive all-wheel drive quattro system but you'll also notice cosmetically we've got some new carbon fiber components for additional downforce around the front the extended lower front splitter here got to watch that over some bumps and also the canard around the side um towards the wheels mtm's wheels naturally as well as audi's ceramic brakes inside there but i will point out at this moment that we're running on pilot alpine winter tires so we're speed limited we can't go to the complete max speed of this car i mean the snow right next to me pretty much gives that away uh, from the start coming around towards the back not too much changed around here of course it's got a new exhaust system it sounds very good believe me we'll hear more of that but the initial noise is not actually one of let's say the supercharged engine so the standard R8 Plus carbon fibre rear wing. But let's have a look on the inside too, where we have the bucket seats. Always good for, for support and I guess more grip. And then back here, we can open up the engine bay. Ah, I forget, you need the ignition on to open that up. So the button is there, hydraulically opens up. You can hear the noises of the car preparing itself. And that is our supercharger. So it's 40 hours of work to install this into the car. It's just shy of 60,000 euros for the supercharger component. And we're reminded it's supercharged on that rear window. But that is what gives this over 800 horsepower. And I'm still taking that in myself. So you also got a new carbon fiber part over the top here. But wow, that's a, uh, that's a serious piece of kit. So let's close this back down, click it into place on each side. There we go and I think maybe even jump straight in and go for the drive. I mean, we're familiar with R8, driven them before. Just notice also the carbon fiber side skirt. Should have spotted that earlier. But this is not such a standard R8. We've also got MTM floor mats down there as well, but sitting into the buckets, they are very snug, it has to be said. We're greeted by the virtual cockpit. Familiar, of course, but let us hit this button fire it into life and we've got the familiar v10 engine sound so like i mentioned there's not really particular intrusion of the engine that actually sits back there behind us with the supercharger it's a little bit noisier but it's still very much r8 v10 so it's a car that you can use for just about everything if you can get over how small the luggage space is in the front that's always been my bugbear with the r8s these seats are very 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 firm that's for sure. There's a bit of storage space behind in the coupe, but you lack that in the Spider. But nonetheless, I don't think we're driving this for practical reasons. I think we're driving this to see what 800 horsepower of R8 feels like. So let's get out on the roads and see if we can find some Autobahn as well. Now things to notice in here are there are some very strange noises going on of water flowing around, presumably cooling the vehicle. Um, the seats are very, very tight, clipping that in. But I know when I get moving, the clutch is going to make me go, that is very jumpy. Okay, we're on the move fine, we're on the move fine, but it's definitely configured 
for excitement and sportiness and craziness. And you just drive it gently. We'll put the drive select, oh, there we go into individual, back into comfort mode. So gentle driving, and we know the R8. I used to own an R8. We've driven the new generation many times before, from when it launched a couple of years ago, through to the new versions of it that now exist. So it's a great car. It has every bit of feature, technology, safety, as well as ample performance. Yes, I decided when I drove the Spider, which is equivalent to the non-plus version of the V10 with 540 horsepower instead of 610, you can now have a Spider Plus. Um, that 540 horsepower in this car wasn't quite enough and the 610 is really the one that you want. But driving it gently, there doesn't seem to be any difference to normal, if that makes sense. It feels very much like I was expecting a normal R8 to drive. It's just when we do something a little bit more dramatic that I think it's going to feel different. And obviously we've got the 7-speed S-Tronic uh, double clutch gearbox, so we will start playing around with those in a moment. But the first stage, driving gently, is completely normal and you would not know what this car was capable of. I must be honest, I find the seating position in this bucket seat very, very odd. You're remarkably high, there's not that much room if you wanted to have a helmet on, let's say. You'd be very compressed to actually fit in the car, and it's certainly higher than the standard, more comfort seat that the R8 would come with. Obviously, there's extra support by having the uh, strong side bolsters. Now, we've got a little bit of a dip in the road in front of me, and I'm very conscious of how low the front of this car is, so let us do our nice little twisty maneuver to get over that, there we go, no problems, and out onto the road. So heading onto an interesting bit of road, I'm going to press drive select and put it into dynamic, exciting and liven everything up a little bit, pop the gear shifter over to the right, which just means obviously it will stay in manual, which is definitely something I want. Okay, you do hear some slightly strange, or different, I should say, unfamiliar noises. There's, there's a whine back there of the supercharger and then the familiar crackles of the R8's exhaust system but I'm looking forward to pulling out onto the main road here and experiencing this and, and feeling what it's like because I'm very familiar with the general regular engine in this the the V10 it's the car I've done many many or an engine I've done many many miles with it's an engine that's shared in many cars I've test driven okay I'm generally whoa -ho -ho -ho! Okay, at first I was being very gentle on the throttle, just to, and I was gonna say it's just like normal, and then I gave it a slightly further press, and I started to feel some of that, and there's a lot of it, so I need to get a clearer run, of course, to get a better feel for what the, uh, what the power in this is like, but I can already feel that it's gonna be something. I've had a little bit of an introduction to what this car is capable of, but quite clearly, it is far too fast for normal roads, and as such, the Autobahn is beckoning. Unfortunately, there is a de-restricted section right where we are. Now, obviously, winter tyres means that you can't go completely nuts, but with your eyes a little bit on the uh, speedometer and rev counter, let's see how rapidly this thing accelerates, if the opportunity presents itself and allows us to, but I'm already anticipating something out of this world. So here we go, out onto the autobahns, and they're looking quite empty already, which is very convenient, so off we go. My goodness, even just pulling away. I'm not 100% on the throttle either here. And we're straight up to 240 kilometers an hour. It makes unusual noises, the way you hear the whines as the power grows, as the revs rise up through the rev range. And you get max torque from about 5,000 or so, max power right up towards the top end if you look at the charts. But we just need a clear opening and then we'll get an opportunity to uh, put the foot flat on the floor and see what this thing can really offer. Here we go then, foot flat. The noises it makes are bizarre. Straight up to 250, that is so fast. But it's also incredibly linear, it's so smooth in the way it gets to that speed. I mean, obviously the top speed is in excess of 300, but it's the way that it doesn't go in a massively dramatic, you know, as you're familiar with turbocharged cars way, that the power builds at the end, you feel like you have so much more of it much earlier in the acceleration curve. That's quite fascinating to experience. You're perhaps waiting for a little bit more, and then you realize how much you've actually got. It's a very smooth acceleration. It's not snap your neck back acceleration, but there we are again. I'm back up to 250, just like that. So your neck isn't crammed into the back of the head 
progressed, but you are gaining speed insanely fast. This is a really interesting one to experience actually, because obviously you don't so much find supercharged cars anymore. People have, or manufacturers are often going down turbocharged routes. So the attaching and obviously the complicated engineering to make it possible, the superchargers in this car is a different approach. But you take what is a fantastic V10 to start, the engine in the R8 shared with the Lamborghini Huracan is one of the, the best out there. You know, the sound, the noise, the feel, just pure V10 symphony. But then in here, obviously it's a, a different way of going about it when you stick a supercharger on. And I've been cruising along now at 180 kilometers an hour, which is like 120 miles per hour, just gently like it's nothing. And all-wheel drive cars help massively on the autobahn at high speed because you have more stability, more control. And again, up to 240s that fast on the Audi ceramic brakes. It's mind-boggling. Okay, empty stretch, foot down, flashing red for indicator. It's so fast. And it carries on going so fast. 265, but let's not go any faster with these tyres. What a fantastic experience. Completely confusing, gentle power that translates into insane numbers. Wow! Of course, the car also has the KW suspension system, so KW's fourth uh, generation of the system. And I can tell you from my small driving, it sits incredibly flat and poised. We've got a bit of sun here, which is nice after the cloudy start to the day. But we're going back out onto the autobahn in the other direction now. So fingers crossed again, we can get a good stretch, but it looks very empty already. So this is going to work. Here we go. Wow. <laughs> supercar. Goodness me. Fourth gear at 120 then. Let's go. And we've doubled our speed. Just like that. This is so quick, but not in a snap your neck way. And that's what I, you know, you drive in a twin turbo McLaren or even a new Ferrari and you have this like head sucked back feeling, whereas in here you don't, it's just fast. It's just like off you go fast. It feels OEM, it feels normal, like it's from the factory. I mean, even seventh gear at 200 kilometers an hour right now, so exactly 200-ish, I think it was exactly when I said it. Foot down, instantly some torque and away you go. Instantly, and then 240 again. In seventh gear, I didn't even have to drop down a gear. That is something that requires calibration of your mind to understand. It's addictive letting a gap open up in front just to experience the linear feel of the acceleration out of this. I mean, it's almost like I constantly just want to go 120 up to 250 just to, to feel such clean power being put down onto the tarmac. The way it's just, ex it, it's not exploding, but it is. It's one of those discrete things that's just massively there. There is so much presence of the power. Okay, I'm just waffling like crazy, but that is literally how I'm being made to feel driving this. Even from 110, you put your foot down, and 150, and 190, and I'm going to back off. It just, it's so quick, it's so quick. And then it seems fairly civilized at the other end of the spectrum as well, it feels like a normal R8 when you drive it gently and I haven't actually put it into comfortable driving modes but you know pop it into comfort and everything will get quieter back into automatic on the paddles and yeah normal R8 job resumes that that's basically how it is but obviously we want it in dynamic we want it in manual we want some space we want to drop some gears and then we want to do this from 140 170 190 
220, 240, 250 and back off. It's just, yeah, it's just, your, your eyes can't read the numbers as quickly as they're climbing. Anyway, this has been awesome fun, but let's head off the autobahn now and experience the car slightly more gently before we come to a rest. It feels like we're barely moving now at 90 kilometers an hour coming off the slip road for our exit. But if I put the car back into, uh, oh, I've gone into individual where it got even louder, back into comfort, just to be a little bit relaxed for a moment and a bit quieter. And even you just drive it gently. I like the feel, I like how tight the turning and steering ratio is in the car because it gives you an exciting you know, feedback and feel from being so pointy and direct. Yes, the all wheel drive system and the weight at the front means that an Audi an R8 isn't necessarily as pointy as some of the more lightweight alternatives, so let's say it's still a big heavy engine in a fairly heavy car. But that, yeah, that like power and experience, and I'm just like noticing, this feels like a lot of play in the steering. Anyway, um, didn't really feel like that while driving. Obviously we're in comfort mode where it's supposed to be super, yeah, massive difference, completely variable feel. But then when we build up some speed, it gets more direct. That's quite interesting to experience even on its own, to, to literally feel the change in, in steering feel with speed back at really slow manoeuvring speed again. It's back to stupidly light. It's fascinating. Anyway, we shall head, I think, back towards MTM actually and uh, have a little bit of a last think and, and feel about the car, but I'm not going to lie, as I've said, it's been quite an experience just taking in this amount of power. We're back at base and it's going to take me some time, I think, to fully calculate and comprehend this experience but while we're here just a quick glance around the interior of the r8 if you're not familiar with it just to see some things in a little bit more detail and of course the big thing the virtual cockpit the full digital display that you can configure and change the different modes and how you're seeing and what you're seeing and it's going to show me yeah there we go we've got the rear sensors up because i was just uh, maneuvering it so those i think stay up but you have different displays you can have in fact why don't we switch it off and you can see oh right there you can see the different display options we turn it back on, we get a nice needle sweep as well across the rev counter, but you can cycle through different screens and options um, and depending what you want to have um, on this display and bring that up in the center. Your drive select configuration is here for your different settings, various bits and pieces. Um, performance mode to get full power out of it in the dry with summer tires, really. You can hear that it revs higher. That's the mode you need to be in for launch control. Um, exhaust standard or sport, depending how you want it. Engine start and stop, of course. So you can put it back into comfort mode like that. Um, the button to open the bonnet, I'm gonna open that actually, because when we jump out, I wanna show you how awful the front bonnet space is. Um, mirror controls, obviously no seat. You know, if you had the normal seats, you'd have the controls here, but no uh, controls for the bucket seats, just a, a lever underneath to slide it forwards and back. The MTM floor mats that I mentioned earlier. Um, Air vents in the center, Audi's familiar system for the air conditioning, that's nice. You've got a, a good storage bucket tucked away under here. Um, good for popping your phone and bits and pieces in down there. Uh, Estronic selector, pretty self-explanatory to be honest. The pouch in which the key can be stowed um, just there on the right hand side and then your controller um, also for the infotainment should you wish as well as a storage bucket here on the armrest. But other than that, not too much really to show you in here. Um, you can see the supportive wings of the seats, the red stitching in there and piping going nicely with the choice of colour for this car. And then a bit of luggage space back there on the parcel shelf as well as the SD slots um, and the CD or DVD for the navigation changer as well. So let me switch this off. I will use the lever down here to slide my seat back, make getting it out easier. I always do that in cars with manual seats. If you just slide the seat back, it just makes it a touch smoother. And you can see we're outside the front doors of MTM where there are a number of their projects and nice cars around. But the bonnet that I want to show you, or the lack of it, that's all the space you get. Even a laptop bag is the full size of the base. So one small suitcase maybe, um, but that's more or less it. Not that I think MTM really mind that when they're working on these cars. And of course we're very near Ingolstadt, the home of Audi, just north of Munich. But that has been an experience. This has been a very fun car to drive, incredibly fast, and it's going to take me, like I said, I think a little bit of time to really get my head around that car. I've always been a big fan of MTM and what they do since back when I had my Audi S5 Cabriolet, which was eight years ago now that I got that car. 
um, and they did some work on one and one of the first um, to, to do some work. But really, that's felt incredibly, I would say, OEM, factory-like. It doesn't feel like something that's, you know, it's, it's that well integrated. That's what I'm trying to say. So I think that pretty much wraps up my day with the Audi R8 V10 Plus from MTM, the 802 horsepower, 710 newton meter, insanely fast machine. That is, that is quite something. If you've got an R8 Plus, have a think about this. Have a big thing, especially if you're in Germany and you have the opportunity to use it. Wow. Anyway, big thanks to MTM for the opportunity to drive that car today. Thanks as always to you guys for watching the video. I appreciate your support an awful lot. So please do click the bell notification right down below to get instant notifications of new videos that are uploaded to see drives in cars like this. Anyway, that's it for this time. Thanks again, guys, and I will see you very soon. Cheers.